Hey, welcome to The Process. My name is Dr. John Bush. This is a continuation of my video lessons where I'm getting deep into using the uh, 2015-22 to 22 positional ADP predictions, kind of a preseason versus what happened at the end of the season. It's kind of the big picture. I've covered wide receivers first for lessons, definitely some interesting findings that uh, will at least give you something to think about in setting up your draft sheets and whatnot. I'm now moving to running backs, and we're going to try to figure out uh, is uh, – the public's perception, is that something we can use to our advantage? And does it turn out there? You may hear some thunder in the background. Let's see. So abbreviations, yes, preseason, end of season, fantasy points per game, taking preseason-based predictions of positions, in this case running backs, and then trying to figure out where they all ended up at the end of the season using the last eight years, spreadsheet, pivot tables, box and whisker plots. If there's something suspicious, apply ANOVA to the treatment groups. And if that is significant, we move on to the Tukey test to compare the groups and then uh, observe versus expected, uh, use chi-square, and then I try to turn it all around and look to current ADPs for 2023 and see if there's any anything we can figure out along the way to help us out in our journey. Okay, so... Uh, what you see are three columns here. Uh, this is uh, over the eight years. This is the average ADP of the entire team running back crew. So the public's perception of all the running backs rateable on a team. How does that influence the end of the season? Does that give us any insights and advantages. So we had the top third, mid and bottom third of the public's uh, rating of the uh, running back crews. And then what you see here is at the end of the season, what was the average fantasy points for the running backs in that crew? And you can see this is from the top teams. Uh, mid and bottom, and I stained uh, the top fantasy points per game in green, the top third. No color is mid, and red are the failures or the bottom third. So you could probably see how this is going, and it's very exciting. Not a lot of failures over the eight years uh, in the top team, so the public their judgment is going to help us figure out some good picks, I believe. And here's the bottom uh, 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 right, uh, running back crews. And this is the sadness there is. A lot of red. So if we plot each data point from high to low uh, crew averages preseason, and then I do in triangle the actual resulting average for the running back crew into the season. And you follow the uh, uh, trend line. This is a polynomial trend line in red. You can see the trend line. It kind of levels out here. And I marked kind of the top third, middle, and bottom. And then I marked kind of a level 15 fantasy points average. And you can see right away in the top group, lots of crews that ended up above 
the 15 point level, only four here, and this is over eight years two here. So when you're fishing in the in the ponds, a lot more bigger fish here than there and there. Okay, so it kind of shows you where to go and probably where to avoid folks and and it's not a guesswork and you're thinking, oh uh, I can pick these two. Folks, you're not that good. I'm not that good. Look at look at the losers and you're telling me you can pick these two? No, 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 no. Unless you've got a diary over the eight years and you've picked the the rarities, the, these articles about we're going to find these sleepers, pretty comical. Okay, I don't care what they're doing. Okay, I understand anybody could get lucky, right? The uh, blind squirrel finds the acorns every once in a while concept there. And uh, so I don't even pay attention to, you know, the people. I got 20 sleepers and all this other 20. 20. You've got 20. Uh, for running backs, by my method, there hadn't been many sleepers, but you've got 20. Okay. Uh, not buying any of this stuff, folks, so I suggest you not as well. Anyway, just gives us an idea visually. So if we use our box and whisker, and the green is from the top, third what the public's thinking the mid and the bottom you can see right away big differences and look at the whiskers look at that and look at the outliers even all the the great outliers are coming from where the public is thinking they should come from okay it's not like there's a secret here okay but somehow you're going to pick these outliers here this year Man, ain't nobody going to click on that article. Come on. So we see what appears to be a difference. Is this real for this eight years of data? Is this due to chance or is this due, this variation due to us using the data and figuring it out? Use the ANOVA testing. First right away, here's the mean, 14.1, almost 14.2 to 9. So we're talking, as a crew, we're talking, what is that, five points a week difference? Where do you want to fish for your running backs? I want to fish here. I don't want to go there. Is there a difference? Yes, there is. This is a F stat, 46.6. That is significant. So. The ANOVA says that those three treatment groups, there's a difference there. I mean, I know you can probably predict it's the top versus the other two. Okay. But we like to do it statistically so we're not tricked and surprised. And lo and behold, uh, this p-value here says, yes, there is a difference. The mid and the bottom running backs, there is no difference. So you should not, even though it may sound interesting, you should assume they're all the same. The ones we really need to focus on uh, for any kind of uh, slap us in the face bargains are the top versus the mid and the bottom. 28% difference, folks. 36%. The, this kind of difference will put money in your pocket. Okay. So just as we found that data, I thought I would kind of step back for just a second. And uh, right now this is 2023, looking at each team and just looking at the top, the mid, and the bottom. So green, no color, and red, just for us to kind of see what teams are being perceived as having some good running backs. Cleveland, Denver, Green Bay, Houston, Jacksonville, uh, Vegas, New Orleans, Pittsburgh, Seattle, Tennessee. Okay, so there's where you want to look deeper Concerns, Baltimore, Buffalo, Carolina, Cincinnati, 
Dallas, Minnesota, New England, Giants, Jets, Tampa Bay. You're saying, are you talking about the wide receiver, uh, running back ones? No, we're talking the whole crew. Okay, we're not to the R RB ones yet. We're just saying of the crew, right? The handcuff, handcuff things. In other words, where do you want to fish? Maybe find some deeper plays there. Okay, we're not, we're still at the landscape level. Don't get all crazy here on me. Here is just how this overall team level works out as far as distribution. Uh, the quarterbacks, running backs, uh, tight ends, and wide receivers here. This is uh, June 30, 20th here. Team level crews, ADP averages. So overall, the public is rating uh, WRs better. This is FFPC ADPs here. And the tight end and the quarterbacks are at the lowest and the running backs. So there's going to be differences in overall values and what. So you got to kind of juggle that in your head. But here are the, the green are the better crews, at least by the public, and the red are the worst crews by the public. Crews means multiples. We're not RB1s here. Not judging anything yet. We are setting the table for deeper plays. Okay, I don't know where you're hanging out, but you've got to go top down on your data analysis. If the place you're hanging out, it's not doing that. They're not doing you any sort of, uh, favors, okay? Care what they say, okay? Uh, it's just not how you should approach this, okay? Uh, you know, unless they've got a documented, like, hey, I've been doing this 20 years and this, okay, great, okay? You, you don't have to follow you know, from top to bottom. You can go bottom up. That's fine. I like to go top down. Okay. So we're looking at the crews and just look across 2015 to 22. So I showed you 2023, kind of stepping back historically, just for your knowledge to see where these things are and, and not the top, the mid, the bottom. I just colorized. Just for looking at teams, just, you know, kind of see what's going on and what's happened in the past, just for your knowledge. I mean, you know, for instance, uh, Houston's been on the bottom the last couple of years. They looking pretty good this year, that kind of thing. Pittsburgh, been looking pretty sucky last three years. Okay. Just that kind of thing. Look at Tampa Bay stepped up a little bit last year. New England stepped up the last two years. Okay. Uh, is Dallas? Cleveland stepped up two years. This is Chicago. Okay. So you can figure this out. So on top of this, I then added the average of the the crew. So this is kind of preseason, uh, top, bottom, and mid. And this is the actual fantasy point data. And then I put the results into the mix for the RB1s. So we are moving from landscape here. Landscape, the whole crew. I'm now moving to RB1s. Okay, RB1s. So now we're moving away from the whole group, which this data back here says, let's pay attention to the whole group. So in other words, handcuffs are seen to be stronger. Maybe even third level RBs could be tricky and, and be hidden in there. Could be some nice values. Now we're doing RB1s. Here's the results from the top, the mid, and the bottom. How does the uh, RB1s from the crews, how the public perceives preseason, 
So high, mid, and low preseason averages versus the RB crews fantasy points per game. And lo and behold, uh, the public was rating the crews the highest, mid, and low, and the RB1s are falling in line with that. So, you know, people that say, oh, you don't pay attention to ADPs. Folks, that's where you begin. That is where we should start. And statistically, there's differences, folks. So you are hurting yourself by ignoring what's being given to you here. It's on a platter. Does that mean you slavishly follow ADP? No, that's not what, have I said that? No, this is just where you start digging, right? Okay, if I'm looking for gold, I'm not digging in a certain area if there's no sign of it, right? I'm going to try to go where there's more nuggets to be found. So it increases your chances of uh, prospering in your drafts. So we got the high, the low, uh, the low, and the mid. So if we look at our treatment groups here, RB1s, 15.6. 13.511. Where do I want to pick my RB1s from? Hmm. Do I want 15.6 or do I want 11? Folks, it's not even close. Not even. Four and a half points will win you weeks. Okay. This is amazing. In fact, these RB1s predicted preseason are going to be running into RB2 territory maybe at the end of the season. So you're talking about some underlays. Here they are. So we look at the F stat of these treatment groups. Anova says there is a difference. Tukey says everybody's different. Everybody is uh, different at the .05 level. Okay. Everybody's different. So we can parse out our RB1 hunts into the top, uh, the top third, mid, and bottom. Just I showed you where to start hunting. Doesn't mean everyone you pick is going to be a trophy fish. Okay. But there's more trophy fish in the high column than in the low. Okay. 15.5. Versus 11. Okay, so that is what this data is telling. This is kick ass data here, folks. Kick butt and take no prisoners here. So I'm going to show you the payoff. Here is the cruise, and it shows you the quarterback tight ends. Here's the RB1 cruise predicted uh, in the June. Chubb, Jacobs, Henry, Harris, Etienne, Walker, Jones, Pierce, Williams, and Kamara. Okay, this is what I see. Uh, Williams is very intriguing from Denver. Okay, because look at the price you have to pay for having a shot at being a big fish here. Even Damian Pierce and Jones and are intriguing. Chubb, Jacobs, Henry, everybody knows those three. So that's that's not a surprise. You know, there's nothing there. Okay, the price is what the price is. Might get a little bargain, maybe, but I really want to think, I know Kamara with the legal, but boy, if he slips slips that thing, he has delivered potential RB1 price uh, cheaply okay here is the uh mid teams mid teams remember the mid teams are kicking out and they're different okay the mid teams kicking out 13 and a half and they're still different from the top team so uh look at some at the top here. Gibbs, eh, probably about 
Akers is intriguing. Swift, Pacheco, Brian Robinson, uh, Devin, Urban. Those are intriguing. Look at Kamara was at 31. Okay, so very intriguing. These guys are mildly intriguing. Okay, and finally, are these really RB1 types? I know Barkley, Pollard, Stevens, so I'm probably worried about Dobbins. You think Mixon, probably okay, but then Madison, get a little risky. White Cook, I'm getting really concerned about these cats right in here. Okay, these are where I'm really concerned about. Doesn't mean I won't take them, but I better get a price. So this is how you can judge your fishing here, folks. This is so good stuff. Okay, this is the beginning. This is not the end. This is the beginning, but it should make you think about things. Okay, when I see this, it certainly makes me think uh, price points here. and. Look at the difference way back, mean, okay? So we're talking four and a half point difference fishing in this pool versus this pool. As a group, RB1, as a group, not Barkley versus CMC. We're not, we're at stats, look at groups, okay? But it, leads us towards deeper thinking. So when you look at my data, you should, oh, well, he said, no, 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 no. I'm telling you, this is uh, data that you should think deeper about. You should think about the price, right? I'm all about that value, okay? All about that action. So, this is, but I need to know where to fish, okay? And I'm not going to be tricked if I rely on Madison and he gives me RB2 production at the end of the year. I'm not looking around saying, I didn't know that. Where did that come from? Folks, you already knew the uncertainty level was going to be higher from this group than in the other group. So for you to be surprised, I've done everything I can do for you. Okay, is this fun or what? Come back, we'll have lesson, uh, I think I'm doing RB2s next. RB, yeah, RB2s. Okay, we're going to knock that out too. Woo, woo.